Suppose you get a patient at your clinic with deep pockets. What do you do? You do scaling and root planing. But what if you're unsuccessful after that? That's when you do flap surgery. Now the word flap surgery, I know it's big and scary, but it's not. What we do is we cut open the flap or the soft tissue, we open it up, we clean the area of any infected tissue, granulation tissue, calculus, and we place the flap back, we suture it, and the healing is done by our body. The steps include incision, which means cutting, reflection, which means we are opening it up, debridement, which is just a fancy word for cleaning, then repositioning the flap and suturing. Now these incision can be horizontal or vertical. Horizontal has three types that is internal level incision, crevicular or the second incision and interdental incision. The first incision that we place is the internal bevel incision. It's called internal bevel because bevel is placing inside. Now internal bevel is the first incision. So first means number one, internal bevel starts with the letter I. Now I and one looks alike. So that's an easy way to remember. This incision is placed away from the gingival margin and you should make sure that the blade reaches all the way to the alveolar crest. Number 15C and 15 blades are used. Internal bevel is also called as reverse bevel incision. It is a basic incision for most periodontal flaps. The second incision is called as the circular or the crevicular incision. Now this is because the blade passes through the sulcus of, of all the teeth and again it has to reach all the way till the bone and the blade we use is 12 or 12D. Third incision is called interdental incision and we remove whatever is left over that small wedge of tissue which contains everything from granulation tissue, infection tissue, everything is removed with this. And for this incision, we use an Orban's knife. Now flaps are classified according to the flap placement. This can be displaced flap or non-displaced flap. Just like the name, displaced flap means it changes its position from its original position. And non-displaced means the flap returns to its original position. It is further classified according to the management of papilla. It can be traditional or the conventional flap and the papilla preservation flap. But we are looking at the tooth and the gingiva from the occlusal aspect, that is from the top. The three white holes that you see, these are three different teeth. And the green part is the gingiva. We make a semilunar incision towards one side either on the buccal flap or on the lingual flap and this way we are preserving the flap. In the conventional or the traditional technique the interdental papilla is split or cut right through the center. There is no preservation here. The last classification is according to the flap reflection. This can be full thickness or partial or split thickness. In full thickness flap the flap is exposed along with the periosteum which is covering the bone. Now this full thickness flap is usually indicated when there is something that we need to do with the bone. If there's something that we need to fix in the bone, that's when you do it. Like for example, here there is exostosis that is present in the bone. Exostosis is a bony projection. So we need to remove that. So for this, we need to remove the periosteum. In partial thickness flap, only the flap is removed. The flap, which includes the epithelium and the connective tissue, the periosteum remains covered in the bone and then we do the debridement. Now there is an incision called external bevel incision. This incision is not used in flaps, but it will be there in one of the options just to confuse you. So external bevel incision is used for gingivectomy. Gingivectomy means removal of excess gingiva. This is in patients who have bulging um, enlarged gingiva. So a Kirkland knife is used and the reason why this is called external bevel incision is because the bevel is facing outside. 
That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a like and a comment and press the bell icon so you don't miss out any of my If you have content. any queries, you can email me at the email given in the description below. Thank you.